welcome to Clue Done It, the podcast where we make wild guesses about fake TV crimes and discover real facts about the amazing people who brought the shows to life. I'm Jessica, IMDb Maven, and the person who reads everything in a theater program. And I'm Jacob, writer, producer, and seniorly detective, Logic Cop Investigations. Whoop, whoop. Each week, we watch a show and try to immediately guess who done it, without any clues, context, or apparently accuracy. Then we spoil everything. We not only tell you who did it, but also who made it. All right, let's find out. Who was right. Who was wrong. And who is dead. What are we doing this week? Okay, we are doing Haven. Season 1, Episode 5. Okay. Haven is a show that I am unfamiliar with coming into this. I mean, I know yes. what it is now. We've watched the first four episodes, but yeah. I knew nothing about this coming Me in. Me neither. Tell us what it is. Okay, I have two log lines sure. for the show. So, first one. Many in the coastal town of Haven, Maine, have a dormant curse or trouble that could trigger at any time for any reason. (laughs) They can be triggered at any time, people. (laughs) Yes. There's no warning. (laughs) There's no warning. There's no warning. You're just triggered uh, all the time. Yeah. FBI agent Audrey Parker, the sheriff, that's a different person, and the town's black sheep, that's another person, must deal with the troubles deadly effects okay so that's the first one that's the first one yes so we know there's an fbi agent named audrey fbi agent named audrey there's a guy who he's i don't think he's a sheriff yet in this yeah in season one he's not the sheriff yet his father's the sheriff Mm -hmm. but he's like the assistant sheriff or something deputy Deputy is the word you're looking for he's the assistant sheriff and it's called a deputy yeah and his name is nathan nathan and then the town's black sheep is duke duke played by eric balfour duke and I love the, I love the I, there's something weird about one person being the black sheep. I, I mean it's a it's like that's just the noun singular plural sheep that's all that it is but it just every time you say black sheep I expect there to be more people than just duke. Like duke and his gang. Oh. You know I what I mean? Could somebody named duke? No, I'm just saying like like sheep. I just automatically assume like a flock of sheep, not just no, one person. Yeah, I there's know, a I one. Get, I know, that's what I'm saying. Hello, I know the English language. I'm just saying <laughs> I f- it just if in this context it feels like there should be more. It feels like Duke should have a gang of pirates or something. <laughs> He's a smuggler. He can have pirates. He does live on a ship. See, we do find out that the deputy, soon to be sheriff at some point, Nathan. Nathan has a trouble of his own. Ooh. And we know that. I mean, just from watching it, right? Right. Yeah. Is uh, it erectile dysfunction? No. <laughs> or yes, and yes, and no, we're not really sure. Duke doesn't have a trouble and the reason Mm. why we know this is because all the troubles started appearing when audrey came to town as an fbi agent which i will read to you in the second log line now i'm going to read us the second log line in a voice in a voice she has no past she has no family she was raised in an orphanage so she lives for what she does best be an FBI agent. That's why Audrey Parker is sent to a distant main village called Haven to investigate the crime of passion. Of, sorry, not a crime, <laughs> not crime, a crime, of, crime of passion. <laughs> <laughs> to investigate the crime of a prison fugitive. It's irrelevant. We get over that pretty fast in the first episode. What she does not know is that her past is connected to that village, that old threats from the past are coming back, That's the troubles. And she is going to be a central piece on everyone's life or death. (gasps) No, not Audrey. (laughs) Yes. And we, this is, so we know that because in the first episode, two newspaper people who write for the local. They own it. They own the newspaper. They They own it. They're published. They're the publisher, editor, writer, photographer. These two, these two brothers. They tiptoe right along the line between yeah. like creepy and quirky. It's like it's like someone took Northern Exposure and Stephen King and kind of mashed them together, and they're yes. not quite sure. Yes, and if you are not familiar with this show, it is actually based on a short story called The Colorado Kid by Stephen King. Right. Yes. And it is Maine, which is typical for Stephen King. His I think all of his stories numbers, are set in Maine. Number at least a number of them are. Yeah. And Mainers are always. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Is that Mainers? They're called Mainers? Yeah. I never even thought about that until you said yeah. that. Okay. Hello, I, I Mainers. Knew, <laughs> I knew 
somebody years ago who was a, he told me that they're Mainers. They're not Mainanites? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're Mainers. Okay. Alas, they're Mainers. I have another joke. I have oh, another main oh, joke. Do yes, it, do this it. is you know why living in Maine is so confusing. <laughs> why? Because if you stay there, you're a remainer because you've stayed in Maine. But if you're someone who left Maine and then came back, you're a remainer. So everybody's the same in Maine. No one knows what to call everybody in Maine. <laughs> They're all Mainers. <laughs> I, I interrupted you. What are you doing? What are uh, we talking about? So I was just referring to the Colorado kid and the the elements that have been probably brought over from the yes. Colorado Kid story, which are the two newspaper people, brothers. And they show up in the first episode and they stare at Audrey and are completely flummoxed, flummoxed by yeah. her because they later they show up with the front um, page of a newspaper from 20 years ago. 25, 28, something, um, yeah. There's a murder... Headline is, Who Murdered the Colorado Kid? Or Who is the Colorado Kid? And is, there's a body in the picture and this woman who looks exactly like Audrey. It looks exactly like Audrey. But you're like... It's that whole kind of like TV thing where you're just like... They didn't actually hire Audrey's mother, but they used Audrey to like... Oh, Audrey back in... Couldn't be Audrey. It must be Audrey's mother. So the Colorado kid, what I read about it, though, beyond that is that, so I'm just going to read this first paragraph. This is on Goodreads. Somebody says, solution to the mystery. Hi, everybody. I'm looking for people's ideas and theories on the solution to the mystery in the Colorado kid. I know, I know. That's not the point. The point of the story is the story, and it's a deconstructed mystery story, and I have been warned many times by the character that this wasn't a story, yada, yada, yada. So it sounds, this is, sounds like an interesting short story. Like it's a story that has no solution to it so it's totally a dis deconstructed mystery story because you never it's not it's not the grandest game he's like middle finger grandest game i'm not going to tell you what happens oh, here oh i see what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're not they're not actually going to solve it it gets a little meta on it all yeah that's that's exciting i have read a, i have read a handful of his books but i have never been a huge i've never been a huge stephen king i don't i don't dislike stephen king i'm just not a big i just never dove in in the way like some of my friends did whatever we don't need to go down a rabbit <laughs> you're not here to listen to us not two non-stephen king fans go down a rabbit hole of what we think may be based on what we've read and heard about other stephen king stories that's not why you're here yeah you're yeah. here for the guesses yes. so what are we guessing this time season one episode five yes this is a so if it wasn't clear this is a crime drama fantasy horror sci-fi mystery thriller it's all the bases no not, now it's crystal clear it's yes. all those things yes yeah. The pilot premiered July 9th, 2010. This is episode five of the first season. The entire show is filmed on the northeast coast of Canada to stand in for Maine. Sure. And so it definitely has that feel. It and definitely they, has a very authentic vibe of this is taking place in like yeah. northeast. Yeah. So we're watching on the Roku TV channel. Right. And if you want to it's watch free. along with us. It's, it's free. free. There's yeah. commercials, but it's free. Yeah. And this episode is called Ball and Chain. <laughs> I don't know why that episode title amuses me, but it does. Yeah. Oh, these supernatural troubles that people have. Yes. Nobody knows why they have them. And d did we already say, like, they came about when Nathan was, like, eight years old. Nathan, and in case you've forgotten, way back when, Nathan is the, the sheriff. And also the sheriff, yeah. sheriff slash deputy slash love interest for Audrey. Yeah. And he goes, uh, but then they, the troubles go away, but now they come back. They come back when Audrey comes back. Is this yes. a clue? Is this <gasps> a clue? Yes. Probably. Probably. And we know now that he has a trouble. Right. He with has... Capital T, that rhymes with P, that stands, stands for, for Paven. P oh, Haven. Paven? Haven. I'm just, I'm just roll with it. I'm okay. just being ridiculous. Um, he, and it's not his trouble, but one of the aspects about him is that he cannot, he has no sensations. Right. He can't feel anything. He can't feel anything. And so in the first episode, it's a little rough because you kind of feel like he's just emotionless as well. Right. As mo <laughs> when you say you can't feel anything, it's like, no, you're really not feeling anything, are you? That's okay. That's a choice. Sure. Yeah. And it's a little rough there between the two of them because you're like, are we supposed to think that they have great chemistry? <laughs> it is hard. Like it really does. It really does show the lie where it's just like I'm stoic and I'm strong and silent. Well, it's really hard to op to act opposite a stone. Yes. Yeah. 
But they they kind of fix that they up. They fix it. They they uh, find their level. Yeah, they find yeah, exactly. They find a level. So all these things happen, but everyone's like, "Oh, there are these troubles or these things are happening, but they're not noticing them." And Audrey is the only person who's like, "Hey, there's some weird shit happening in this town. I think it's real." I, and I think that person actually is causing that weird fog. Right. I think that person is causing that those weird reactions to the five people. And everyone else is like, no, no. This is also... That's this is, not happening. This is also the show where you, have, you watch a grown woman act as if she's terrified of a butterfly. That was a great moment. I love yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, because she... Because the butterflies but, were harbingers of the horrible, the horrible troubles that were going to be like... Yes. Like she was going to be killed by these butterflies. It well, was legitimate. It, it was a harbinger. It was something a harbinger. else yeah. that was going there to happen. Was, she was either going yeah. to get crushed by a stone or electrocuted. Or, or a rope was going to tie her up. Or so that she was going to get cocooned and squeeze her. There's all these yeah. things that are going to happen. So I'm, but just like watching them be, there's a, there's a great line where a butterfly lands on a steering wheel and one of the characters is like, oh, this is going to suck. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a good line. And you're like, it's just a butterfly. <laughs> if I thought that about all the fruit flies in my <laughs> kitchen. Oh, my gosh. All right, so we're, we're watching season one, episode five. What's the log line on this one? Um, so it's uh, Ball and Chain. Mm-hmm. When extremely old men mysteriously turn up dead in town <laughs> and appear to be aging and decomposing at an extraordinary rate... Audrey and Nathan begin to track down whatever must be preying upon the men of Haven. And when someone close to Audrey becomes the next victim, oh no. she must figure out how to reverse the process before it's too late. She needs to reverse the curse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm betting that there's going to probably be some kind of like love triangle action happening on this one. You know what I mean? It's just yes. like one of like Nathan or Duke. Duke yeah. is a black sheep in case you've forgotten already. Duke, Nathan or Duke is going to come down with this and she's going to be like, no, I can't lose you. And then the other one's going to be really upset that she likes the other one and the yeah. feelings are going to bubble to the surface and it's going to be tense. It's going to be tense, people. Yeah, yeah. And Duke, by the way, does not, it seems like he doesn't have a trouble. Oh, okay. So uh, he's just a he's just a normie. For some reason, he's a normie. Okay. And he's he lives a normal on a pirate. Boat. He lives on a boat and he's a smuggler, so he's a pirate. All right. Here we go, people. Season 1, episode 5. Find it on Roku. Play along. Well, I maintain my position that American TV is nothing if not efficient. Yes, that was so fast. It was so fast. I love it. I love it. Just get in, body, done. The show start. It's a lot of fun. It's a, we've got, okay, here we go. Are we ready? Here's what it is. Yes. Do we, start with the, we start with the journalist brothers. Do we know the names of the journalist brothers? Uh... Uh, while she looks that up, let me just say that the journalist brothers are heckling each other, and they are fishing off a pier. Vince in Haven. Teagues and Dave Teagues. Vince and Dave. So Vince and Dave are fishing off the pier and. Haven Harbor, and one of them is making fun of the way the other one casts. They say, well, you do it. You you think you're so great at it. You try it. They do it. The other brother does it, puts it out there, gets the lure caught on a dinghy that's just in the middle of the middle of the harbor that's not tied down to anything, and they don't want to cut the line because they like the lure, so they reel the boat in, and the boat stinks. It's in bad shape, and it stinks because there's some dead, rotten lobsters in the boat, and then they pull over a tarp, and guess what? There's a dead man in the boat, too. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So there's our dead person right there. But never forget, gentle listener, that according to our arbitrary, completely made-up rules, we get to watch to the end of the teaser. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so even though there's a body, we still get to watch a little bit more. So they reel it in. They call the police. So who shows up? Our two pals, Audrey and Nate. Nate is looking fly this episode. I don't know where they found some moose, but they put some they moose in his, his hair. hair. They, they did. They ruffled Trimmed his hair. Trimmed it a little. I don't know. But yeah, he's definitely looking a little, uh, little more and fly. And he's giving it a lot more feeling. Okay. A lot more, <laughs> yeah. he's, a lot more zhuzh. Yeah. He's laughing at her, smiling at her. Yeah. I mean, not like a lot, a lot. But, yeah. oh, there is a baby that shows we'll, up. We'll, we'll, get okay, okay. we'll get to the baby. We'll get to the baby. We'll get to the baby. So Audrey and, and Audrey and Nathan show up and they take a look at the body and they're like, oh my God, this body looks like it's a hundred years old. It looks so old. Audrey starts to question the guys. They don't know who it is. They don't know what he was doing there. But they do say 
as they're looking at the guy, they're like, he looks even older now than when we found him. When we found him, he only looked like he was 80. Now he looks like he's over 100. So there's something weird. The body is still looking like it's aging, even though it's dead. Yes. So that, and like, she doesn't really note that when she, they say when that. They, yeah, she's she doesn't like, clock mm, it. Whatever. She doesn't clock it. And I was... I, when you were telling me the log line earlier that the body, dead bodies were popping up and aging, I was like, that makes no sense. How could the dead bodies be aging? But nope, clearly. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. I need to expand my mind. They go off and she starts to examine the body some more. They find a tattoo on the body. Who knows what that's all about. And the harbor master shows up. The harbor master shows up with a brand new baby that Nathan is like, I didn't know you were expecting. And she's like, I'm not I adopted and I just picked up this brand new baby. So good for her. She has a child. I, of course, am looking at this being like horrible, horrible, horrible things are going to happen to this baby. It's like it's like Chekhov's baby. Like we, you don't <laughs> you don't put a baby on the mantle in Act One unless something horrible happens to the baby yes. in Act Three. Yeah. So, oh man, that's now just now we're gonna get to know not, this harbor master. That's right. We're gonna get to this. What's her be... name? Britta. Oh, I forgot. It's like Britta. We'll call her yeah. Britta. It's not that. It starts with a B or something like Birdie, Britta, Maybe. Birdie. It's there's a B, there's an R, there's a T. You make your own name up. That's that's what we're gonna roll with that. So that's what we know. The harbor master says the boat has been stolen. They don't know who it belongs to. Nathan is gonna go track down whoever gave the dead man this tattoo. Maybe they can figure out who that person was that way. And Audrey is gonna go talk to Duke over at Duke's new restaurant that he's got. And Nathan is a little growly about that. And Audrey's like, you're going to have to get over hating him. Which, let's be honest, means that probably Duke's the one who's going to get old and maybe die. Because <laughs> Nathan is going to have to like really admit that he like cares for Duke as a friend and wants him to be a friend in his life. That's that's a that's a side little guess I'm having on this. I think, but I think that's how it's going to go. And that was it. That was the teaser. We know that Nathan is going off looking for a tattoo. Audrey's going off to talk to Duke. There's a dead man who's aging even though he's dead. There's a baby. Horrible things are going to happen to. Time for guessing, folks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we're staring at each other yeah. with wide blank blank looks on our face because this is this is it this is the zero moment of the podcast every time we're like what the yeah. heck is even okay. going to happen so, yeah i have no freaking clue i that's good that's the way we like it right right i am going to say that it was it's a stork it's a stork. Oh, yes. Okay, I am here for you. There's a stork. This is already better than I could have imagined. And when it comes back, you know, when Audrey comes to town. Sure. And it brings babies and a special disease for old men. Or for men. A special disease for men. No, what? Oh, my gosh. Okay, no. Here, here are just all the ideas, right? So it's something crazy with a stork. Something crazy with a stork. Uh, it could be something crazy with erectile dysfunction pills. Something crazy with a stork and erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe no stork. Or, yeah, I guess that could be F- C, B? both A and B. Sure. And then... The stork delivers bottles of the little blue pill. Yeah. And then I also think I didn't read the Stephen King Dark Tower story, but sure. I know that there's something about, like time different dimensions and sort of like time travel i happens. don't know about time travel I, I think that there are definitely like different worlds he travels through different worlds yeah yes. so i think somebody has come from a different world and brought and because they defy aging as they're traveling through Audrey. time sure that they have brought father father times like somebody's got to pay like oh, um, like, like the I like, know what you did last summer or or those people no those the movie where the people got on, get on the plane and then they get off the plane and they they were supposed to die on the trip. Oh, and what so, is that? What is that movie? It's not. It's like the weird slasher movie where it's like final exit or something yeah, like that. And the death comes. Some for them. people are screaming at us. People are screaming yes. at us. <laughs> but uh, death, death comes to them anyways. Like you can't cheat death. So if yeah. somebody comes, so so what you're saying is that somebody somebody is essentially taking years from other people so that they could stay young. Well, like somehow someone is cheating time, but time or time or death is like I don't care. Like yes. you may have gotten away with it, so I'm gonna take the years from this person over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, I and like that's that. how the baby came to be. 
Okay. That's how the Harbor Master's baby happened. That's a time traveler. It's a time traveler. Okay, so we have storks and time traveling babies. This, these are the quality hot take guesses we are yeah. here for, and I appreciate that. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you keep both. If there is a stork or time traveling babies, time travel. It's not just time traveling babies. It's time traveling retribution. This is time. This is a, this is a. This is like time traveling with a sense of weird, ironic justice attached to it. Like there's it's, the <laughs> scales here are just like, you oh. may think you're cheating time, but no, no, somebody's going to pay. Oh, I love it. And maybe that's what like the tattoo is all about. Does the tattoo a map or is a tattoo like some kind of like... It looks like, what's it called? The steering column? What do you call it? A, ship's, a, 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 ship's, a, ship, a ship's wheel. The ship, the steering wheel. The ship's it's wheel. It's not yeah. called a steering wheel. It's called a... I'm not calling it a steering wheel. I'm calling it the ship's wheel. But it, there's another word for it. I I have no idea what it is. I just called it a wheel. Okay. Well, the wheel that's on a ship sure. that the captain and his mates right. do their thing with. Uh, <laughs> they steer. They, they steer, <laughs> they yes. They steer they, the ship. <laughs> sure. With it. Starboard or? Port. Port. <laughs> yes. The only way I remember that is starboard. Stars come out at night, so that starboard's the right. Oh, thank you. That is how I remember it. <laughs> it takes a while for me to get there, at which point I'm too late to do whatever needed to be done on that side of the ship. But that's how I remember it. But it depends on which way you're... It's, it's always facing depends. forward. It's oh, always you're facing, facing forward. forward. It's the, it's, it's, right if, is if you were staring starboard. at the bow of the... If you were staring okay. at the bow of the ship... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, those are my guesses. Those are your guesses. <laughs> I'm imagining this stork with a like a wrestler's mask on because he's like he's a tough guy stork, <laughs> and the Grim Reaper scythe, and yes! like also like a baby in yes! one hand, and the stork is like, I'm gonna give and I'm gonna take away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some absolutely. Stork. That's some crazy horoscope picture. <laughs> oh my god, I'm in love with that. I. Oh my god, I'm going to have to up my game. I didn't have anything like that. Okay, so who do we have? We've got the harbor master. We've got the the tattoo artist that's going to come in here. We've got a baby and we've got a dead man and we've got dead lobsters. And I think the lobsters I'm wondering if the lobsters are also somehow in like if like if I cast fireball, the fireball doesn't just hit one person, it takes over an area. So oh. I'm wondering if like this like age spell doesn't just hit the the guy in the boat, like it hit the lobsters as well. Or if or if the lobsters have just been out for a week and they have been like they have just decomposed in a week. Yeah. So that's something that I don't think we know the answer to. The I didn't think it looked like a ship's wheel, the tattoo. I didn't think it looked like the ship's wheel. I think like it looked like some weird like simultaneously like a cross section of a tree trunk but also maybe a map of a globe so i i didn't uh... or a compass it kind of looked a little compassy. oh yeah i can totally see compassy on that which would go with your whole multiple dimensions thing like it's a tattoo that shows you the way between oh, dimensions oh yeah um all right i bet it was the baby I bet it was the baby. I think you're right. You're guessing that there is this person who is traveling through time and the stork is like, nope, I have to maintain a balance of time. If you're cheating time somehow, I have to take time away from somebody else. I am guessing that since horrible things are going to happen to the baby, I'm guessing that it is not some third party force who is balancing things out. I'm guessing that it is in fact the baby. That it is the baby or it is somehow a cult who has figured out, like, kind of like if this, because this is happening to a lot of people, right? Because that's the whole thing. Like, when men just start dropping dead all over here. So I wonder if there was a cult of people who have figured out maybe the secret to eternal life and they are doing this. But I don't know. So, okay, so I've got one. The babies are actually the people who are doing it. And now I'm just picturing babies walking around with magic wands being all well, like, Expediarmus! It's interesting because. Nathan asks the warden if he can hold the baby. Yes. And then she, and Audrey looks at him because he is so uh, like into the baby. He's he just is like, so oh, enamored of the hello. baby. You're totally right. Oh, cool, cool, cool. He does. He like starts singing to the baby and she's like, who are you and what have you done with Nathan? You're right. I bet it, I do. I think the baby, the babies are behind the this. The baby spreader. The baby spreader. The baby. <laughs> 
Wow, that is unintentionally a little dirty. No, um, I meant it like the baby's a like a, a super spreader. Yeah, baby is a super spreader. Yes, yeah, baby is a super spreader. That is, yes, I'm going with the baby. Somehow the babies, are the babies behind it or are the babies like just what happened to it? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure I would say that the baby is specifically the like the agent of doom because that would mean like you know what i mean like i don't know that the baby has the self-will or the agency to do it but i'm wondering if somehow like they are transformed into these babies somehow like the life is sucked out and given to the babies oh. but but the baby but you're right like the babies it's a i, I bet it's some kind of venus fly trap kind of thing like the oh. babies kind of like suck you in and you do, you get a little goo goo gaga, look at the babies, isn't this amazing? And somehow the baby like sucks the energy out of you. So I am, I'm going with the babies. Huh? You're going, you're going with a stork or some other kind of like third party supernatural thing who's keeping things in balance. And I'm going straight up with no, the baby is the malevolent force that is Whoa. doing this. That is absolutely what's happening. And they do it because again, like Nathan just went gaga over the baby literally so i i do i think that this is somehow tied in that like the babies the babies are doing it yeah okay but i have one other thing yes hit me about this so i, I thought about the dead decomposing lobsters yes the decomposing <laughs> lobsters we so we just watched an episode episode four was all about somebody whose trouble was that when they got angry and then ate a food that food in the entire rot. town right. went rotten. So if like you... Immediate, and like horribly rotten, like black, exploding black pus rotten. Yeah. So they're leading off with these lobsters who are they're also super aged. They're dead decomposing lobsters. So this show is a week after... The one that we're watching right now is a week after last week's episode. Sure. And they say in the show that these de decomposing lobsters have been in are about a week old and so i'm like is no one going to talk about the great poisoning of 2010 like just a week ago we're, we're when, just like, gonna let that that was done that was last week everybody dropped dead we don't need to worry at this about restaurant and everybody in town and the, the ice cream guy was ruined and his cows are all dead and like what nobody in town can eat oh, ice cream that anymore poor ice cream guy like he's gonna have to go get some new cows yes yeah and i mean the collective I don't want to talk about it in this town is a little crazy. <laughs> They're New Englanders. They just keep a tight lip. Yeah, that was last week. We don't care. That was last week. We don't talk about it anymore. People have trouble. No, we don't have troubles. Nobody's but here's a baby. Troubles. Oh, who's a cute little, little baby? baby? But we don't talk about the troubles. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to watch the rest of the show and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> And we're back and oh my gosh it was it was a bit of a photo finish we had to go back and watch some tape only in this case listen to the tape yes because we had to go back and listen to what each of us said I'm not you know what I'm not gonna give it away I'm just gonna say we were really close we were super duper close I think you more so well, there was, no, you had, you had, okay, so, spoiler, okay. You are going to spoil it? No, I'm not going to okay. spoil it. I'm just going to say we didn't win. We didn't oh, win. I don't, okay. I don't think, I, maybe we can discuss this at the end, but we didn't win, but we were really close. Yeah, okay. Like, you had the, you had the whole thing about, like, the energy balancing off and, like, someone coming and, like, yeah. taking energy and moving it from here to there. And I had the whole thing with the babies going on. So we were, we were both about halfway there, but yeah. neither of us got it. Yeah. Did, uh, yeah. 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 So go for it. Go, go for okay, here we go. So that's what we said. The found the body, found a dead body. Harbor Master had a baby. Nathan went crazy for the baby. Nate was gonna go check out a tattoo parlor. Audrey's gonna go check on Duke's. Nobody knows anything about anybody or this person with a tattoo. Nobody's seen anything. Duke's is just this great big party scene. There's this guy, he's got a birthmark on his face. He's macking on this like tourist lady that nobody's ever seen before. Audrey and Duke have a little bit of a 
whole hey hey what's going on are we kind of flirting duke's trying to like give her the pressure she should just relax have a good time they make a date and they make a bet duke says that she will cancel on him before the date happens but you can tell he's really excited about the date and he'd like to have a date with her meanwhile nathan goes to talk to the tattoo artist the tattoo artist totally recognizes the tattoo he designed the tattoo he tattooed it on some guy maybe a year ago but then he looks at the picture of the tattoo and he's like, I don't know, that couldn't have been me. The way the ink was, that must have been that must have been tattooed on this guy decades ago. Decades ago. Even though I designed this, I couldn't possibly have tattooed it on this guy. Which brings to the first question. Like, in a town where there's magic, you don't think to question? Like, okay, maybe something weird is happening here? Nobody. It, nobody does. No, I, that's what I want to say. I, I want to talk about for a second. Sure. The only person in town who is like, something this is this weird unnatural but nobody says weird or unnatural right. they're just like this weird and unnatural thing that's happening the only person who notes that is audrey yeah everybody, everybody else, is else just in like, town is whatever. like that's impossible or they or that's they recognize weird. it and they just dismiss it like later on yeah, the they corner just dismiss it. later on the corner just like makes a joke of it she's just like oh well you know it's haven magic happens but nobody else in town is like maybe because we have troubles Nothing ever happens. Nobody but... ever thinks like, oh, yeah, they're <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you're watching Grimm, you're like, well, you know, there's a werewolf down the street. <laughs> right. There's a werewolf. That, like they know that monsters exist and they're like accepting of it. So yeah. like, okay, girl, well, maybe it's a monster. Like what? There's not even maybe it's a monster. Like they know it's a monster. Do you have in this magical book of monsters that you've been keeping any clues as to what type of monster it might be and yeah, how to and defeat it? Right, yeah, to, to do the magical index the there. the book. Yeah. But that doesn't, yeah. It, Everybody here is just like, no, 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 we're New Englanders. Yes, and the... Here, Lobsters are weird enough, thank you very much. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want to kind of blame the journalists that, like, they didn't go around and, like, or there Catalog, isn't some historical society, or maybe that antique store that's in the, in the, the credits. credits. Maybe there is somebody there who actually kept track of, like, the weird troubles that people that had in town. That would be awesome. I so want to see the, like, trouble historian. Because nobody else nobody has else, been keeping nobody track, else of, is this keeping track of this or even, even thinks. Or even thinks about it. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I would be, I would be, worried. like, who, how do people even eat in this town anymore? Right. When it's, like... Last, Last week, week, all these things, <laughs> like people were poisoned and had their stomachs pumped. Like, well, how is this okay? Like, eh, whatever. You like, know there I mean? are pandemic trigger warning. There cannot be enough beds for as many people <laughs> as got deathly ill last week. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's not wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody believes in magic, but apparently they believe in a coroner. They go to talk to a coroner and the coroner says, well, you know what? He don't know how he aged so fast, but his bone density was someone in his 30s. So even though he's dead and decomposed, he was not actually that old. And they're like, do you have any explanation for this? And she's like, well, you know Haven. Like, like she knows. People know that magic happened in this town. They're not dumb, but they're also like, nah, couldn't be that. Or, yeah, eh, who cares? It's magic. <laughs> no. Anyways, but yes, the coroner doesn't know. They also play a fun game in this. Next time you're watching any kind of murder mystery or mystery show or anything, here's the fun game to play. It's called, What Activity Do They Give People Who Are Just Fonts of Exposition? Oh, yes. Like, you can't, like... Yeah, this is huge on Law & Order in the oh, yeah. first scene. Oh, in any scene. In yeah. any... There, so many, you're supposed to be super busy, like, like canning yeah, something. Ca canning or something or, like, moving boxes. Move, moving boxes off of a truck. Like, there's a <laughs> cop talking to you about a murder of your friend, and you're like, I'm sorry, I really can't stop. I gotta keep moving these boxes yes. over here. <laughs> or they've gotta change this tire. Or they've gotta do this march. Or so, something is always happening... If you know that this person is actually not involved with the story at all, if they're doing something completely unrelated to anything else and they have no time to talk to the cops, they're yeah. just there for exposition and they're doing something to distract them to make the scene feel as if it's worthwhile. In this scene, the coroner is trying to take a tennis lesson. Uh, she's not taking a tennis lesson. She's just trying to hit balls that are being shot at her from a tennis machine. And she is milking it. She does such a great job of like She bantering. is terrible. Oh, she's horrible. She's horrible. But she knows. She's just like leaning into the comedy of it oh, all. Yeah. And I have, I have such a I have such a fond place in my heart for her. I may look her up on IMDb, even oh. if you haven't, simply because I'm like, I want to I want to know what else she's done. Okay. Anyways, as they're there with the coroner, though, Joe Campbell. Joe Campbell, remember him from last night at Duke's? He was the one making out with the tourist. With the little birthmark on with his cheek. With the little birthmark on the cheek, exactly. 
he he shows up and he's super old and he dies right in front of the coroner. Dun dun dun. On the tennis court. On the tennis dead. court. Dead. Uh, so now they know that they have to find the tourist. They're like, somehow this tourist is involved with it. But nobody knows who this tourist is. They don't have any pictures of this tourist. So Audrey goes to the Teagues brothers. And one of them is a really good artist, which you saw in the first scene. And they make a sketch. And everyone's all like, okay, we need to find this lady. So what does Audrey do? She takes it to the harbor master. The harbor master who now has so much baby stuff. There are like now multiple cribs, lots of clothing all around, and she's never seen the tourist, but when Audrey mentions that Joe Campbell died, the harbor master Beatrice gets a little nervous. She gets a little kind of, oh, what's going on? Hmm. But you meet a nanny, Abby, the nanny from Nebraska, who's an old family friend, comes in and is just like looking at Aud- looking at Audrey and Nathan Grimm like you need to get she's trying to push them out of there. But Nathan once again goes crazy for the baby. And I'm like, I am so convinced right now in the episode that the baby is behind it all. Yeah. And you do notice that, and here's uh, 2010 gender uh, thing. Sure. Um, that the baby is wrapped in a pink blanket now. Yes. And he says, oh, that's going to be so confusing for Benny. And um, right. the, the harbor master goes, oh, no, no, we just got lots of stuff. Lots of hand-me-downs. We, lots, lots of hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs downs. adopted baby. Right. So, yes. But that's they don't the think, explanation. That's the explanation. But clearly, they, maybe it's a second baby and this one's a girl. Anyways, because after, after Audrey and Nathan leave... The harbor master, Beatrice and Abby, look at each other and they know they know who the tourist is, and they both are like, "Oh no, we've got to stop Helena." Yes. Oh my gosh, they know. Okay, so after Audrey and Nate leave the harbor master, they get a call and they get a lead on the John Doe, the dead John Doe who started everything in the boat, and they think that he might be one of this pair of criminals who do lobster poaching. But they buy their bait and tackle from this shop one town over every Friday afternoon. So they're like, great, let's go there and let's arrest this other guy and maybe he'll give us some information about the John Doe. They go and they stake out the bait and tackle shop and while they're staking out the bait and tackle shop, Duke gives Audrey a call because guess what? It's one week later, it's Friday and Duke's like, hey, remember me? We had the date and he's like, I'm making shrimp and Audrey's like, well, shrimp is my favorite but I have to work. And Duke is disappointed and a little hurt, but he's like, puts a brave face on it. And so they hang up because the other guy comes to the bait and tackle shop and Audrey has to go arrest him. But Duke is feeling a little sad. He's feeling a little wounded. And wouldn't you know who shows up at that moment? Dun, dun, dun. Helena. Duke and Helena start getting it on. You don't see it. You just cut away from it. You cut away to Audrey and Nathan questioning the guy that they got at the tackle shop who is James Waddell, who's roommates with Phil, and Phil is the guy that's dead, and James totally knows Helena. Helena was with Phil the night before, two Fridays ago, and then the next day, Helena was gone, but Phil got really old really fast. Now we know that Helena hangs out at Duke's every Friday, which we also know because we saw her seduce Duke. The next morning, on Duke's boat, he wakes up, and Helena is gone, but he's super achy. He can barely walk. He puts on some pants and goes out to his car. While he's getting into his car though, he sees the harbor master Beatrice and Abby and they are looking very grim. She's like, what's going on ladies? And they're like, we're looking for a friend. We're looking for a friend. And he's like, okay, whatever. Meanwhile, Nathan and Audrey are looking at an autopsy report from 1954 about a man who died, aged quickly and died quickly. The woman who was his wife died a week later in childbirth. How is it related? Nobody knows, but it's related. Throughout this whole scene, Duke keeps calling Audrey, trying to get her to pick up, but she doesn't pick up the phone. She finally picks up, and Duke's like, I am ill. There is something wrong. And yes, Duke is now aging rapidly. So between the two of them, I didn't guess which one of them was going to have to like get old fast, but I knew one of them was, and you're right, it's Duke. That's the only part I got right. We'll talk about the other part of my guess on that, which I got wrong. But yes, well, one I of the men. Well, I thought you thought it was going to be Nathan. Maybe I thought it was going to be Nathan, but I was so like... so into the baby. Well, when we were watching the show, I thought it was going to be Nathan. But in any event, yes, I did think it was one of them. And then some feelings were going to come out as one of them getting old. But I thought it was going to be feelings from Audrey. 
They go, they see Duke. He's rocking some great gray hairspray. Seriously, the makeup artists on this, I don't know if it was like all computer graphics or just the computer graphics changing people from one person to another, but the makeup effects on this show were also pretty good. Yeah, that was some good liver spot neck. Yeah, yeah. Like he had good, good droopy neck, good <laughs> red ear. <laughs> Anyways, they're talking to Duke about what's going on, their theory about people aging and getting pregnant, and she's like, "What?" Well, he's like, well, I saw the harbor master this morning looking for a friend of theirs, and they're like, that's it. The harbor master knows Helena. They go to the harbor master's house, they look in the harbor master's house, and they see that all of the dresses that Helena were wearing were in the harbor master's closet. So somehow, the harbor master is also Helena. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. So now we know that she is behind it all, but we, she doesn't know exactly how it's behind it all. That the, what did we call her? Abby, the nanny from Nebraska comes in and is just like, you can't be here. You should go away. There's nothing, you nothing to see here. And they're like, this man is going to die unless we stop this woman from giving birth. And they go. Helena is hiding out. Helena slash Beatrice, because she's Beatrice now, is hiding out at the lighthouse. And she is super duper pregnant. And Duke is at death's door and while she's giving birth they're trying to figure out how to stop the baby from being born because they think as soon as the baby's born duke is gonna die what to do exposition 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 they realize that if the baby is born the mother can't touch the baby and maybe duke will be okay maybe the father's okay as long as the mother doesn't touch the baby so she delivers the baby and then they take the baby away from the mother right away and then they think maybe, well, what if we give the baby to the Duke and maybe the energy will go back into Duke, which don't ask what's going to happen to the baby at that point. But they take the baby to Duke and Duke does not like it. Duke gets even sicker when the baby is near him. So they decide that it must be that as long as the baby never comes near the father or the mother, both of them will be fine. The baby won't die. The father won't die. Everything will be okay. And so they hand the baby off to the social services. social services adoption type people. Yeah, which seems like they, they make a statement a little later on and that references that this is probably hard on Audrey because, or maybe you think, this was probably hard on Audrey because basically she just orphaned a little girl. She orphaned a child. A and child she was an in order to save Duke. And... Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of loose ends to tie up here. Orphan. Beatrice was actually, Beatrice slash Helena was actually the granddaughter or the great granddaughter of the woman who died in childbirth and they think was related to this happening back in 1954. So that's how that happens. And Abby, the nanny from Nebraska, is an old family friend. She knows about it, but she doesn't know how to stop it. And remember when I said that there were going to be some emotions were going to come up? One of them was going to get old and there's going to be emotions coming up in the relationship. Yes. Well, it wasn't Audrey's emotions that came up. It was the emotions between the dudes, Nathan oh, and Duke, yes. and why Nathan hates Duke and whether or not they can ever be friends. And I don't want to say it's tragic backstory, but they're definitely hitting on some like weird bro backstory behind it all. I didn't get very much in that scene. There Maybe was not I a lot. There was not. Attention. There was not a lot to get. Just, just the like, fact that are like, are you gonna hate me? Yeah, exactly. Like they hate each other. They're he angry hates at a each other. Word. Yeah. The they're, end. They're really angry at each other, but somehow they really do still love each other somehow, mm -hmm. and they're both really important to each other. That's okay. what you're supposed to get out of that scene. Okay. It was a little bromance. A little oh, bromance right. here. Not okay. like the not like the girly romantic love, but bromance. Yes. So yeah, that's what sure. you're meant to get out of that. And at the very end of the episode, you see Beatrice giving a key to Abby and Abby walks out with the key and then you see that Beatrice turns into Helena and walks the lighthouse chained and shackled to the ladder of the lighthouse so that she can never get free or kill any other men. And what I want to know is like, is this just every Friday night, like every full moon or every Friday night, she's going to have to shackle herself to the lighthouse or is she literally never leaving the lighthouse again? What are we supposed to think? Because if she's never leaving the lighthouse again and Abby's gone... She's going to die pretty soon. I think she... It's just a Friday thing. It's just a Friday thing? She just locks I herself think, up on Friday nights? Yeah. I mean, again, this town is like a... I don't want to talk about a town, but I just wonder if they're all like, well, this is the Troubles, so we'll just have to wait it out while we're, you know, and be weird right. until it stops happening, and then everything will be fine. Everything will go back to normal. But yeah, they end with they end with her and this very like Enya slash Sarah McLaughlin kind of like 
plaintive yeah. female vocalizing over like romantic music and she's clearly the siren in the lighthouse and it's tragic and it's it was, it was a fun little moment it's pretty gothic it's very gothic it's very gothic yes absolutely so there yeah. you go that's what it is so we weren't like there was one point i got really super excited i got super excited because while she's while they're piecing everything together Audrey says, she's like, so the babies are doing it. It's the babies. She literally says the babies are doing it. My fists went up into the air. Yes. I was like, yes, <laughs> it's the babies. You would have done like a trot around the living room. like Victory, a victory trot. But I was like, ah, it's not really. I mean, we don't know yet. Hold on. <laughs> she did have to like set me down and like let me unpause it and make sure we got to the end of the episode because I was ready. I was ready to claim victory, people. <laughs> so, But no, it was not the babies. It was Helena. Helena is not this force looking to like even out the like the energy of somebody who's no, doing this. No, I was not wrong. There was no stork. There was there was definitely no avenging Nobody stork. Nobody time That should travel, be the name of our production really? company, Avenging Stork. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no time traveling, no avenging stork, no babies with that were like sucking the life out of other people. It was just this Helena spirit, succubus. She's just this oh. Helena succubus sucking the life out of men and putting oh, them into babies. Yes! Oh, she's a succubus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. some sort of succubus. So. Right. Yeah. 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 There you for go. Sure. Once again, well, you we know, were super close. This is the thing about, because you said earlier, like, nobody, you're just going to leave her at the lighthouse, or, you know, is this just going to be a thing every Friday? And then she gets out on Sundays, or she gets out on Saturdays in time for, like, soccer games. Like, <laughs> what's, what's the deal? But I was thinking about werewolves. Like, everybody tries to explain, like, oh, well, you have to leave your clothes. You have to leave pants or a shirt, you know, cause mm-hmm. in a certain place. Because otherwise, you know, after the moon, the next day, you'll be, you know, running around the, the forest naked. Do they ever talk about what's going to happen to her? I don't know. Do they, they never talk about what happens to the werewolf beyond, like, well, you should leave some clothes in the forest for yourself so you're not naked. Like, that's kind of the end of the... I don't know. There are probably some subreddits somewhere that explain... Sure more of what you're supposed to do with your life as a werewolf every single month. <laughs> There's a helpful pamphlet that you can get at the doctor's <laughs> office. So not, now that you're a werewolf, yes. coping with lycanthropy. Yes. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. That's the story. Those are the results. One win only so far. Time to move to the IMDb's. Jessica, what have you got on the IMDb's? So there are some fun things about the actors in this show. Emily Rose, who plays Audrey Parker, the FBI agent. Her, one of her big breakout roles was playing an ER intern in the final season. Ooh, okay, ER. Yeah, and there's actually a website that is Emily Rose's best movie TV roles. (laughs) Somebody, okay, good for you. Yes. That is a dedicated fan. So she was also in Jericho. Oh, she, I remember that show, but I don't think I watched yeah. a single episode. But another Do another kind of a little sci-fi kind yes. of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. She was also in Graceland, where she played an FBI agent. Did you ever watch Graceland? No. Oh my God. Here is the premise. Okay. Graceland follows a team of undercover agents drawn from various law enforcement agencies all across America, including the FBI and the DEA. They reside together in a Southern California beach house called Graceland. (laughs) Together, they work to solve crimes. Oh my God. That That is the most Hollywood. Let's take a bunch of cops from all different branches of everything and just that way they'll fight with each other and then we'll put them in a house like... Like, like MTV. Like MTV. Uh, um, what was that show? Re- reality is in there somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's not, a reality. It's not a reality, real, but it's the real world. Real world. Yes. It's like MTV real world. It's real world, world for cops. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Nathan Warnos is played by Lucas Bryant, who is Canadian, and he has such television credits as Queer as Folk and SoapNet, stuff on the CBC. He's also been in a lot of Lifetime uh, movies. Oh, by the way, Emily Rose is on a lot of Hallmark movies. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's been in a lot of Lifetime movies, though, and some Hallmark movies. He is also well known for his lead role in the Canadian TV sh- movie Crazy Canucks 
crazy Inspired Canucks. by the true story of the World Cup downhill circuit during the 1974-1976 seasons. And he is funny, apparently. Although it <laughs> does is, not show a lot in this show. It does not show in this show. But He's... he um, joined forces. He flexed his funny bone and joined forces with some pals to form the S- Skarsgård Players, the theater company named in honor of veteran Swedish actor St- Stellan Skarsgård and launched an all-male production of Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, based on the Judy Bloom novel. I can't decide if that's genius or horrible. I know. I think it's kind of genius. So my, fa- my favorite thing about him in this episode is that he really leans into the Dukes of Hazard walk, oh. where you just kind of amble a little bit, but you've got your thumbs hooked into your jeans pocket. So you're just walking down the street with your thumbs in your jean pockets. And the only yeah. reason I know that is because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with that walk. <laughs> And then the third lead in the show is Duke. Eric Balfour, uh, character Duke. And he is an L.A. actor known for Country Comfort, which is recent, Haven, of course, and Six Feet Under, Charmed, oh, He was 24. Six Feet Under, Charmed, yeah. 24. Wow, the guy's getting work. Mm-hmm. And recently a show called Time Crafters, which is Pirates and a Treasure Cove. But... So great, he got his start on Kids Incorporated. What? what? Okay, well, you you are super excited about this. I have no idea what Kids Incorporated what? is. It was a show on PBS. It was right after Sesame Street every day. Yeah, five days a week. My Right after Sesame and Street was, was electric company. it was for kids company. just a little bit older. Okay. Oh, no, wait. What was the slime show? The Canadian slime show? That Was that Double Dare? Or you can't do that on television? You can't do that on television. Yes. So it was... Sesame Street, then You Can't Do That on Television, and then Kids Incorporated. Okay, so Kids Incorporated, well, okay, You Can't Do That on Television was Nickelodeon, like you said. So, like, it wasn't on PBS, which oh. is what, which would explain why I never saw it, because I never had cable, cable. growing up. Oh, so, I wonder if Kids Incorporated was a Nickelodeon show. Maybe. Maybe it was, like, one of the shows that I was allowed to watch, and so right. I just assumed it was PBS, but it was <laughs> Nickelodeon. Uh, I guess I forgot. The years have gone by. People. But what? So why? Why did you like? Why, like why did your face light up on Kids Incorporated? Well, what was great was about it? It was just such a. It was like you can't do that on television. It was just one of the. It was one of the two shows that every kid was watching mm-hmm. when I was that age, and it was kids being creative and silly and funny sketches, and they were all the stars. And it wasn't like. The Mickey Mouse or the Mouseketeers right. or whatever that show was Mickey called. Mickey Mouse Club. Like, which was very wholesome and everybody's, you right. can feel everybody's like super directed in those shows. And yes. they're all super talented. Whereas like Kids Incorporated, people were cool and into things. I don't know why. So you're saying it's kind of like Shrek to like the Disney Empire. Maybe, yeah, a little. It's more relaxed, more casual, and uh-huh. more cool. More SCTV. I'm going to jump in here for a second because I said that I wanted to look up the medical coroner, the emergency medical location, because I loved her so much. Her name is Mary Colin Chisholm. She is a Canadian actress, and she's also a playwright. She's an artistic director of a theater company that she founded. She played in lots of things. She was commissioned by the CBC to write a play for the radio, which she did. Good work. Good work, Mary Colin Chisholm. I appreciate you. Nice, nice. I also want to talk about the to the director. Okay. His name is Tim Southam. He is Quebecois. And he says in his bio on IMDb that he is not only a big fan of the screen, but also the performing arts. And he has directed dance, theater, and music-based films, which they list. And they have lots of French names, which I will not butcher. Sure. <laughs> However, Wise he choice. is an extremely accomplished TV executive producer, director, writer oh. as well. He has, he directed American Gods, Lock oh. and Key, Lost in Space, Colony, Animal wow, Kingdom, like Bates really... Motel, Debris, The Good Doctor, This Show Haven, Bones, and House. And he was an executive producer for Lock and Key, Colony, and Bates Motel. So big stuff. And the script, and then there's sure. the two Creative um, creators, work. Jim Dunn and Sam Ernst, who are writing partners. They work a lot together. 
And they uh, work on a ra- wide range of shows such as Marvel's Daredevil, Truth Be Told, and Hand of God. They both live in Pasadena or South Pasadena. But who I really want to talk about is Nikki Toscano, who gets the writing credit on this episode. She has the A-list prestige list of all careers I've ever seen. <laughs> Wow. Of writing credits wow. on okay. IMDb, especially for somebody her age, writing and producing showrunner. She has written for Las Vegas, Detroit 187, the Revenge with Madeline Stowe, Bates Motel also, State of Affairs with Kristen, Catherine Heigl, Shades of Blue with Jennifer Lopez, Hine, Behind Enemy Lines, directed by McGee, Hunters with Al Pacino, 24, Legacy, the 2016-17 season, and now The Offer, which is currently filming, and about the making of The Godfather, and everyone is freaking in that show. Yeah. And she's executive producing writing that. And she only did one episode of Haven. Oh, wow. So she just came in and wrote this one. And, like, she she is a she-her, and... So, and this script, having yeah, as yeah. a woman who has this... The villain of the, the piece. The villain is a, is of a, the piece is, is a, a woman who is sad about a broken marriage and, and not having a family and then And is killing people by giving birth. birth. Like, there is definitely to some... killing men. And it's... And I said, it's like gothic. And it's so... It, it is. It's, it's... So this is a femme gothic writing at you know at its haven best it absolutely is so femme gothic that is another great name for a band oh okay well <laughs> and then there's probably some official word no in, like, there probably English is but i love lit. but i love that femme gothic like that is that is like it was it was like you're right it is very female like the the antagonist the villain of the piece who's like let's face it like the star of each week like these are the stars but then you have your villains each week the star is a is a woman and then b yes like it is so related to, i mean she, like like you said the breakup of the marriage giving birth like all of these things which are female or maternal or whatever all this energy yeah and yeah. she turns into a succubus she turns into and a then succubus has to chain yes herself to the lighthouse lest her lust kill yes yeah so, uh, like, cool, cool, cool story. You know, you're not writing Hallmarks. You're you're writing Gothic. <laughs> Femme Gothic. <laughs> Femme Gothic. Well done. Yeah, awesome. And I, I want to watch all of her shows. Then Now I want to go back and watch State of Affairs and Bates Motel and see some more of her episodes. That sounds fantastic. Until then, I'm Jacob. I'm Jessica. See you next time. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. And now we want to hear from you. Tell us your guesses, your scores, your insider info, your favorite logic cop catches, and your suggestions for what shows we should watch next. Follow us and join the fun on Twitter and Facebook at Clue Or on Instagram at Clue Podcast. Rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts to help get the word out. Because watching TV is always better with friends. Oh, you know, no, no, no. Think of this. Think of Sense and Sensibility. Would you mind playing something else, dearest? It's just that Mother has been crying since morning. What does she play? What does she play then? Yeah, and the internet is just like, Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. <laughs> That's not what... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I would love to see her be all like, um, Yes, um, this is Tears in Heaven on the pianoforte. <laughs>